Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 26th. First up, this is from Navy Thomas 8, and this is uh, an article by foxnews.com, Military Developing Stealth Motorcycle to Let Forces Travel Fast and Silent. This is a DARPA project uh, based on a motorcycle already in commercial production, but they're going to ask for some modifications to it. This uh, present motorcycle that's the baseline they're going to start with is totally electric, but the military wants a hybrid motorcycle developed that could uh, run electric for short distances but also switch over to JP8 type of fuel, I believe it's called, to have a heavy uh, diesel type of kerosene diesel type of fuel. Uh, the partnership is between two small innovative American companies, Logos Technologies, which um, has developed hybrid vehicles in the part and hybrid type of power systems, and then BRD, which is the motorcycle company. Um, there's a video with this, so you can see the video of the um, present commercial version of it, but what the final version is going to look like or if it looks anything similar, I'm not really sure because they were just recently avoided the contract, but it's nice that two American firms are getting the contract. And uh, I'll read you a couple other little excerpts from the article here. DARPA wants the vehicle to be electric only for short periods of time and to run on JP-8 or diesel when it isn't. The feature that the military would like, including heavy fuel capability, two-wheel drive, and hybrid powertrains. have all been achieved independently, but this will be the first time all these capabilities are combined. I think presently they're still using a diesel-powered version of the KLR-650, which was the last motorcycle that the military ordered in any kind of numbers. So. Um, this is kind of nice that in the future they might have something like this, especially for doing scouting or stuff like that where you want to be very nice and quiet but want to have the capability to move very quickly and very fast. I think this will work out really good. And as usual, all the links to all the articles will be down in the description below. This next one's from Jose, um, Jose Angel, um, also a friend of mine that's and a fellow Moto Vlogger. This is about the Lytro camera. Um, he sent a particular picture in here taken by a Lytro camera. And the one thing about this is they're coming out with something new. The light, what the Lytro camera is, is it takes a picture and um, uses some of, the, some of the same capabilities as that um, camera processing that I talked to you about before, about taking pictures through a, a translucent glass or something like that. Um, these are cameras that don't so much take a picture in the conventional sense as they actually um, intercept the photons on a sensor and use computational power to determine what the picture should be from, uh, from that kind of standpoint. So they're more like a computer than they are actually a, a conventional camera that just takes uh, light waves and focuses them. And because of this type of system, the Lytro can have actually allow you to refocus the picture after you take it. So you can click on different areas of the picture, like the background, bring it into focus, uh, objects in middle range, and then objects close up. Uh, it's been out and available actually as a $200 camera for a couple of years on Amazon, so it's something you could actually buy and try for around $200. But as far as professional photographers and their reviews of it, most of them, well, let me, I got a, this guy up here that gives a review that's pretty interesting here from Amazon. And uh, his name is C. Gary, and I'm just going to do a few little excerpts from his view. The Lytro camera captures 3D light information. Um, one of the limitations, though, is the final image is only 1080 by 1080 pixels, so that's a rather small image. Your images also must be viewed on either a web browser or in the included software through a small 500 by 500 pixel window. The desktop software currently has no image editing capabilities other than 90 degree rotation. You can't adjust white balance, contrast, or brightness. The software does include the ability to export a refocused image to JPEG, but the JPEG compression leaves it blurry. You also have a slow shutter speed, too. The top shutter speed is 1 250th of a second, so to be able to get any sharp moving photographs. And it's kind of an extended box type of camera, too, as far as the, the size and shape. So it's, um, I would think it would be very kind of kludgy to hold. And, and um, they say the people that um, have used it say it's it's more of a novelty camera than anything else and uh, it only makes the quality of pictures that you would want to maybe share on Facebook or something like that but don't think of making any kind of quality prints or anything but on the horizon what is happening is there's a new camera coming out from Lytro but it will not be a $200 camera this is the uh, let me get the name of it right here it's called the got it here somewhere the little uh, let me see. I got it written down another place too. 
the Illum, I, th I think it's pronounced, it's I-L-L-U-M, and I think it's pronounced the Lytro Illum. It's coming in July. But the price tag for this one ain't going to be anywhere near $200. You're talking about a $1,500 camera here. But according to the specs, and I haven't seen any current reviews, I don't think they even have test models out, at least that I haven't seen. But um, uh, it does take care of a lot of the problems that it had before as far as uh, giving you more resolution, uh, faster shutter speeds. Um, uh, it's got the, uh, just like a DSLR, it's got a, a lens with different focal ranges and stuff like that. So. Um, something in the future, and I imagine professional photographers, if it finally does meet their needs, they probably wouldn't have that much problem with spending $1,500. But um, as far as the reviewer of the $200 camera on Amazon that I just uh, told you about, at the end, they end up sending it back. They just did not think it was really worth even the $200 for it, and it was more, the, more of a novelty. But, uh, you know, when you're cutting edge and it's the first of its type, you, you know, you've got to expect that there's these little things to be worked out and hopefully in the future it will end up being something a little bit more useful. And this next one is from actually uh, another moto vlogger friend of mine, Sir Shits a lot is actually, that's his, that is his channel name. Um, and I'll give links to his channel name too. Thank you for sending this in. This is about um, the uh, head of NASA and also a uh, Charles Bolden, also a former shuttle pilot, too, is talking about the planned future for NASA. And I kind of agree with his plans, too. He was uh, talking at a, a symposium uh, up talking about Mars and, and space exploration and settling other planets. But um, a lot of people objected to the fact that he thought that NASA, first off, should uh, experience uh, get some experience in lassoing asteroids before they actually go to Mars in around, uh, I think the, the plans are sometime in the early... Uh, 2020s last swing the asteroid and getting a little bit experience with that and then by 2030 possibly uh, start landing people on Mars actually itself and I kind of agree with that myself I think the asteroid thing is a little bit more although anybody that knows me knows I'm an, an extreme fan of setting up colonies on Mars and stuff like that that's to me like one of our major priorities we should be doing but we also need the fact of uh, we need to get some experience at uh, controlling asteroids and stuff like that. That's something we have the capability to do and effectively shield our planet and be able to not have to in, uh, suffer a really huge impact from a huge asteroid if we get the experience and are able to do it. Um, all it takes is a, if you can find an asteroid a few years away from hitting Earth, all it takes is a little push to get it out of our way, but we have to know how to do it and the correct way to do it. So I'm kind of agreeing with his steps here. Uh, one problem in, in carrying out all of these missions, um, both of them, is really the fact of the, just the budget. If uh, you're not aware of it, NASA only takes up one half of one cent after, out of the entire dollar of every dollar that we spend in tax money. So um, even Charles Bolden was saying in one of his uh, versions of the talks that I saw that uh, realistically, before they can actually accomplish all these goals, they're going to have to at least double the budget, which I think is more than reasonable. One penny out of every dollar for our future in outer space and our future in other planets, I think is well worth it, really. This would be one of the few tax increases I would actually agree with and go along with it. Uh, we do have to invest a little bit more in our technological future, and if we hope to survive, I think we need to be a space-faring type of uh, uh, culture that just has to be part that just has to be part of our future in, in my belief system. So, uh, and last up, this is uh, also from a fellow Moto vlogger. This is from Triple X Deadhead. Some of you um, probably already are thinking about buying the Cena backpack for the GoPro camera. It's the uh, Bluetooth audio backpack that'll give you a lot more audio capabilities with your camera. Well, Triple X Deadhead has come up with a couple of extra ways to expand your use of the Cena audio pack and. Uh, also may get a few people interested in it that had no reason to, to purchase a Sino um, audio backpack because, believe it or not, he's actually even gotten it to work with a GoPro 2 camera, and by extension, you could pretty much get it to work with any camera that's got a regular audio input jack. Um, besides the fact um, the camera was, the, the Sino audio pack was not supposed to be able to incorporate phone calls along with conferencing and have that feed into the audio of your camera, well, he found a way to do that besides. But uh, rather than say any more about it, I will just uh, put a little excerpt from his video in here, and the link will be down below. And I would encourage you to go and watch his video about some of the uh, neat things he has uh, found out that a Cena backpack can do and that he's able to do. So that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.
What's up everybody? This is Triple X Deadhead and today we're going to talk about the Cena Audio Backpack. Two things that you didn't know about this device. One, it does record phone calls. Now Cena says it can't do that. Can't do it at all. It's impossible and that the one time you did it Deadhead, you must have been like the exception to the rule. It can't be done. And they're kind of right. I've tested it and it really can't be done. However, I did find a workaround. So let's go ahead and roll that clip.